Hey guys, it's Man here. Now in today's video, we're taking a first look at a brand new resin printer that is currently on Kickstarter. This is the Finder One 136, and this is an industrial printer, uh, not only based on size, but in construction. So let's take a look at the product. We'll go over the specs and we'll see why you may want to consider this as your next resin printer. Remember, this is a first look. So guys, now in today's video, we're taking a look at the Cole Sega Finder 136. This is one of the largest resin printers that we've reviewed on the channel. And the company refers to it as an industrial grade printer. And I have to say, this thing is built like a tank. Everything down here is metal. This thing is heavy. It came in a, uh, a crate type box on a skid because of the weight. And it's large. It's just super duper large. Now, this is a first look because this is not the final, final version. This is currently on Kickstarter. And I was intrigued when I saw uh, some of the specs and it says, just sure, why don't you send it our way? We do a lot of resin printing and wanted to see how well this thing performed. They provided us the printer. They provided us resin. They provided us settings. And we're going to go through and take a look at some of the prints that we were able to issue with this printer. Now, a couple things. Let's talk about the, the speed. It basically has 203 mm uh, printing speed. It also has a lot of features that you're going to see when we open this up, but it's a 7K uh, printer with a 13.6 inch screen. That's large. That's going to give you the ability to have some really nice hefty prints. Uh, the print size is 298 by 165 by 300 mm. Um, level free, so you don't have to worry about leveling. Automatic uh, resin refilling. It basically has temper it's temperature controlled, especially because of the actual hood that it has. Now, Again, this hood, I have something on top of it because it opens. Again, this is not the final version, so you'd have something that would be more secure. It has a, uh, you're going to see the ball screw in the inside that's going to show how the actual build plate goes up and down. It's Wi-Fi, USB uh, capable when it comes to uh, sending prints over uh, to the printer. So let's take a closer look at it. We'll, we'll get a little bit closer. You can see some of the things that I really like about this printer. Now, when they said industrial strength, no joke. This is industrial. This is all metal metal everything is metal it's like super size there's no plastic here except obviously the doors and i don't think that they're standard plastic they're made out of some other material a couple of things that i'll highlight i love the fact that there is that rgb or that blue led coming up on the sides that you can see there you can see how this thing's it, it's just massive so you can see how the build plate is constructed at the top you can see the reservoir uh, it does as i mentioned have that auto fill feature auto emptying it does have a leak proof uh, solution so that if you do have any kind of leakage, you don't have to worry about it. There's protection on the screen. Uh, so everything is going to be secure. Now, it basically has the ability, if you need to do any kind of maintenance to this, uh, this area here is where your control box is. Two screws come up and it slides out. Your USB here on the side. And you can see that it has a super large screen. Fantastically large screen, easy to work with. Uh, pretty much with this one, I don't really see having to move the reservoir for the resin at all because it has that um, emptying feature and filling feature but it's definitely something that you can remove and you can see the big knobs on each side where you'd remove it now one of the things i look at when i'm working with resin printers is making sure that after the build process is complete that my build plate uh, actually has very little to no resin uh, this one does a really good job but still has some pooling here on the sides you can see on both sides wish that it was completely uh, empty or without any kind of resin there You'll notice that you do have this um, this control area here, this release that you can open it up to pull it out. And you do have two handles, massive handles that you can grab uh, to open up the build plate. It's a heavy build plate. Uh, we'll show you what the from the bottom up what it looks like, but it has a really cool design on it. Now, my model doesn't have the auto fill, auto empty, so I don't have anything that I can show you here with that. Um, but you can see what's going on here. And you can see that you do have a resin um, measuring uh, line item right there that's going to tell you you know how much resin you have in the printer uh, as we uh, take a look at some of the prints i want to show you some of the things that we've gotten out of it uh, here is one of the prints that we printed and you can see uh, has great quality all right well this looks like this chest piece all right let me show you another chest piece that we printed out there's another one right here all right this is with their resin we also then printed out this figurine here, or this miniature. All right. Could have probably done a better job cleaning it up a little bit, but I just wanted to see how well it would it do. And we also printed this large item here. We printed out this mask. Uh, so you can see the mask. Uh, it's a little bit on the rough side. Need to clean some stuff up. 
But overall, we're pretty happy with what we saw as a first look. I'm sure that as they finalize the software, that we're going to see um, improvements on the overall quality. A couple of things that we've been having difficulty with, and again, this is because of the newness of the printer, is going to be removing supports. Supports are harder than I would like even putting them in warm water. I found that they're a little bit hard to remove. Now, let's take a closer look at the actual uh, screen. And before we jump there, I just want to highlight one other thing. We're going to move this glove. Is, you know, ours is obviously a first look. One of the things that I've been noticing as this drawer has been closing, you can see it's kind of been rubbing. Let me lower the camera a little bit so you can see what I'm referring to. So you'll notice right here, as it comes across, it's been rubbing here. So I'm assuming that they're going to address this uh, with the final version. And, uh, and you'll see the same thing happens over here, just rubs right there. And the door doesn't remain closed. So I'll, that's why we had that uh, roll of filament on top of it, just to keep it closed. Mine uh, doesn't have the air purifier yet. Uh, so that's something that this is an early release doesn't have. So again, this is why this is a first look. It works, it prints, it prints relatively well for something that's the first release. The overall construction that you're seeing here is pretty spectacular when it comes to the overall, again, quality of the build. And then we'll take a look at what the screen looks like because it's also pretty simple to use. All right, so let's take a look at the interface here for a second. I'll go ahead and hit confirm here. Uh, pretty simple, very large screen. Like the fact that it's black and white, uh, even though we could probably have some color here, but still things stand out really nicely. You can go into your tool area. You can set your Z, you can do your manual lowering or raising the build plate. You do a panel test, set the Z, go back, clear, right? So we'll go back here on the system side. You have information about the actual uh, platform itself. Uh, not a lot going on here, right? And then what we can do is go into network. You can actually uh, call service. So here's the information for service and you can choose your languages. We go into print. Uh, here you can see the prints that we've printed. We printed quite a bit, uh, quite a few prints. We've had, you know, like every printer, we've had some failures. Uh, we've had uh, some that are harder than normal, I would say, to remove the, the supports. Um, we did uh, this Dia de los Muertos skull as well. Uh, so I like the fact that everything is there in history. And pretty much that's all there is to it. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.